Good morning. Welcome to Willow Hill this morning. Very thankful to have each and every one of you with us, uh, whether you're in person, in the parking lot, or online. We're very thankful to have you and uh, being blessed with your presence. So uh, thankful for that. Our watchword for the week comes from Psalm 51, 17. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a bo broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. I'm going to read that one more time just so that, you, so that you hear it. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Psalm 51, 17 is telling us, until we're broken, we can't be mended. Until we realize that we're in need of patching up, we can't be fixed. And I'm very thankful for that scripture this morning. I won't preach you a sermon on that just yet, but it ties along with uh, being the head of the house as the, we have been called to be, which we will continue today. So uh, I know we've got a liturgy to do. I know we have other things going on, and we'll get to it here in a little bit. But if you want to go ahead and flip over in your Bibles to Ephesians, that's where we'll be here in a little while uh, in chapter 4. Uh, if you would now, though, with, if you would turn with me in the front of your uh, Moravian hymnal to the liturgy on page 97, the liturgy on page 97, the national occasions, and I'm going to ask you to let's all stand together, and we will do the national occasions liturgy. For his mercy is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise ye the Lord. Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are accounted as the dust on the scales. Let the living know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomsoever he will. The Lord brings the counsel of nations to naught, he makes the thoughts of the people to be of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands fast forever, the thought of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Yea, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Praise 
Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory. Almighty God, Thou who art ruler of nations, and to whose gracious providence we owe the manifold blessings of our land. We worship Thee with grateful hearts. We confess that in many things we have departed from Thy precepts and from Thy judgments, and it is of Thy mercies that we are not consumed. To Thee belong mercies and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against thee, neither have we obeyed thy voice, O Lord our God, to walk in thy laws which thou hast set before us. Lord, have mercy upon us and pardon our transgressions. Bless, O Lord, we pray thee, all who are in places of authority. Protect them from violence and fill the hearts of the people with reverence and love for those who, as the ministers of God, have been set for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do, who do well, raise up for us leaders who shall perform thy pleasure and in patience and fortitude shall say, stay themselves upon thee, O God. Save thy people. Make of this nation a chosen instrument for the promotion of peace, freedom, and righteousness. May it be a haven for the oppressed of other lands, a home of happiness for all who dwell within its borders. And may our heritage of liberty be preserved unimpaired for, gener for the generations to come. Safeguard, we beseech thee, thy holy day of rest, and the sacred institution of the home. Grant that all who are employed in the education of youth may recognize that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And turn thou the hearts of all people unto thee that they may seek eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Hear us, gracious Lord God. Grant unto those who are of the household of faith Wisdom that as citizens of this nation, they may adorn the gospel in all their works. Enable them to submit to every ordinance of man for thy sake. Ready for every good work, abstaining from every form of evil and rendering unto all their dues. Grant unto the people of this and all other lands a love of peace and order, that the nations shall learn war no more. Hasten the day when the kingdom of the world shall become the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Please stand again.
Now therefore saith the Lord, If you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be mine own possession, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Then shall you dwell in your land safely, saith the Lord, and I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid, and I will walk among you, and will be your God. And you shall be my people. your neighbor on your right and on your left tell them you love them and it's good to worship with them this morning and after that you can be seated again very good to be in the house of the Lord we welcome you uh, to services here at Willow Hill very thankful for each and every one of you um, for as far as announcements goes September is a month for small games for Operation Christmas Child and the donation boxes in the vestibule. Uh, church Youth with Happy Home Flavoring. See Stephanie if you need to purchase that. You know you got uh, Christmas coming up soon and at our house for some reason uh, long about November it starts and the cookie smell don't go away till mid-January. Uh, the cookies, the cakes and the stuff like that. And, and, you know, y'all wonder why I'm so fat. It's because my wife's such a good cook and she loves to bake at Christmas time. So, uh, but very thankful for that. Craft workshop on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Come and, and if you want to, if you have an idea for a craft, if you would like to help make some crafts, if you'd like to paint some things, uh, come at 7 o'clock on, on Thursdays. Uh, choir practice resumes today after worship. If you don't sing with a choir and would like to, Stay and just sit in with us for a little while. See what you think. Um, you're most welcome to do so. Apple butter cutting and making will take place September the 22nd and 23rd. All help is welcomed. Um, 22nd, we will be here. Did it say 8 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock? Whenever you can come, your help would be appreciated, but I think they're going to try to start at 8 o'clock in the morning. Bring your knife and a big cutting board. Okay. Uh, but if you want to bring that kind of stuff, that'll be on Thursday here. Then Friday morning we'll be at the cannery in Withville. Uh, so that'll be on the 23rd. Homecoming will be Sunday, October the 2nd, with a covered dish meal to follow. So, uh, you know, we've had a, here recently had a little round of COVID come through the area and everything else. It'll be nice to have, sit down and be able to have a meal together and fellowship one with another just a little bit. Uh, handbell practice will resume on October the 9th at 5 o'clock. Uh, if you've never had played handbells and think, man, that would be interesting, I'd like to do that. Come on out. Adam is a good teacher, and he's got some good folks that will help you along the way. I, I am living proof of that. And they've got the patience of Job most of the time. Because if they can deal with me, they can deal with anybody. <laughs> um, trunk or treat, October the 30th at 4 o'clock. Uh, Christmas Bazaar, uh, November the 12th. And um, 
bizarre demonstrations will be from 10 to 5, spaghetti dinner from 12 to 6. Very thankful for the opportunity of that, and we'll talk about that more as it goes on. Our Thanksgiving Love Feast will be on Sunday, November the 20th, during the 11 a.m. worship. So lots of things getting ready to happen, lots of, lots of stuff getting ready to go on, and uh, uh, very thankful for the opportunity to be busy, but let's never lose focus on why we're doing what we're doing. All these things are great, but if we lose sight of the Lord in them, they're for nothing. So that's what we want to do, is we want to praise our Lord for what he's done for us. All right. If you if I get a couple ushers to come, we'll take up our Sunday morning tithes and our offerings and be blessed by the choir. Let us pray. Father, we are blessed to worship you with our giving. And God, I know that we can't outgive you. But Heavenly Father, we can let the blessings that you have given us show through our giving back. So Father, we're thankful for the opportunity for the time. Help us to be good stewards. Always, always. God, trying to glorify you with everything that we have. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you very much, and you can be seated. And you can remain seated this morning, and if you would, be grabbing your uh, Moravian hymnal, hymn number 560, we're going to do here in just a second, 560, for all the saints who from their labors rest, and you can remain seated as we sing. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to Ephesians in chapter 4. A few weeks ago, we we started out, and I I kind of stole the statement from somebody, and uh, not only did I steal the statement, then I was asked the question, I stole the statement, one of the reasons that we're in the shape that we're in today is because men have quit being the head of the house. Men have quit being the head of the house. And then I was asked after that service, what do you think a head of a house is? So scripturally, we're going to look at what the head of the household is. Who he should be. What we should be doing. The things that we are looking at come out of chapter 4 and chapter 5. And maybe even a little bit, we might even get into a little bit of chapter 6. But we talked 
not this past week, but the week before, um, about our walk, our walk. We got to be worthy of what we're called to do. We are called to live a life that is Christ-like. As a Christian, our life is to be Christ-like, and we're walk, we are to be walking worthy of that calling. We live in a day and a time when Satan, the Scripture tells us he is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Guess who he is devouring? He is devouring our young people. He is devouring young adults. You say, well, how do you know that, preacher? How do you know that he is devouring our young people and our young adults? Look around this room. That helps. You look in most churches in this area today. You're going to see 40s. Maybe 40s, 50s, very few in their 30s, even less in their 20s. And the places that some of these, when they do go, some of these younger people are going is a place that just tells them, you do what you want to do, it's okay, you've got time. You live how you want to live. Talk the way you want to talk. Do what you want to do. Ain't that what we want to do today? Our flesh says to do those kind of things, but we are to walk worthy of the position which we are called. We have unities that keep us with Christ that once we confess Him as our Lord and Savior, He is the one that keeps us close. But it is our job to seek after Him. He gives us gifts to use. Each one of us has a gift. And those gifts, I don't know exactly what your gift is. And you say, well, preacher, I don't know what my gift is either. Maybe we need to pray a little bit more about God. What is my gift and how do I use it? I've told you time and time again around here, I, I'm the first one that I get a box or Amy orders something or another that's got to be put together. The first thing I do is look at the picture and if I can make it in my mind, look like the picture and start putting it together. I ain't reading no instruction. I'm guilty, guilty, guilty. Let me tell you, this instruction book that we have, we need to read because it is a guidance, uh, a guide, it is a guide for our everyday life, our everyday walk. If we can't stand on this right here, then you have nothing to stand on. If you don't have this in our heart, you don't have anything in your heart. Preacher, that's a little hurtful, a little harmful. I ain't trying to be hurtful or harmful. I'm just trying to be honest with you. We live in a world where nobody is honest with anybody anymore. We tell the truth and we can tell it in love, right? But our definition of love comes without hardness. And you say, well, Jesus wasn't never hard. He wasn't never hateful. Do you not remember the story about him going into the temple and over, overturning the money changers' tables? That wasn't necessarily in love, was it? You think when he flipped their tables over, he looked at them and said, I love you, but you're going to quit this. No, what did he tell them? You have turned my house into a den of thieves. He might, I, and I'm not trying to give you a different image, believe you me. But I think at that point in time, he wasn't giving them a smile. I believe he was gritting his teeth. He had this flesh on his body. He knows the struggles that we go through. When I hear something today about students that want to put a litter box in a bathroom because they identify as a cat, My fleshly side says, tell them to go outside where they should be. If you identify as a cat, go outside and use the woods. Preacher, you, you tiptoeing on the borderline. 
Why do we have those kind of things? It's because we are not walking worthy of our position that God has called us to. Why do we have people that don't know what gender they are? It is because we have lost sight of who God is in our life and we have been afraid to stand up and say, you're a male, you're a female, and that's the way it is because that's the way God made you and God didn't make any junk. He loves you just the way you are, just as who you are, and He loves you enough that He sent His only begotten Son to die for you so that you could have this life and so that you could live worthy of what your calling is, so that you could get the ministry gifts so that you could get the unifying aspects of God and not only can you get the unifying aspects of God that you can have those in one body with several people when you come together to worship in spirit and in truth today we're going to talk about walking as a new man we need a day we need a time we need People that are willing to stand up. And folks, I understand. When I look around this room, I am not trying to provoke anger by no means. But for those that are watching online, you probably are, well, for those of you who are identifying as a cat or identifying as a different gender or don't even know what gender you are, you've probably turned me off by now and that's okay. But for those that are still listening, there's a change that's got to happen. And we got to stand for God and not stand for the things that's going on in this world. Our liturgy today spoke about not standing for the things that the world wants. Satan is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He is putting falsehoods in people's mind. He's telling them that you don't even know what you are. You don't know who you are. And until you grow up a little bit, you can't know. Well, let me tell you, I know who I am. I know who I am in Jesus Christ. I am a blood-bought, born-again believer. It is not of anything that I've done. It is of the gift of God. It is through His Son. It is through the blood for the remission of sin that cleanseth all sin. And for those of you, if you're still listening, that don't know what gender you are, that don't know whether you're a cat or a dog, a bird or a fly, a cow or whatever, I was lost and undone myself. I was lost and I was in deep despair. As we read our uh, watchword this, this morning from Psalm, what did it say? The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. God had to break me down. Why did He have to break me down? So I would realize I needed a Savior. That I wasn't man enough to do it on my own. He had to break me down. Then the second part of that, a broken and contrite heart, oh God, you will not despise. Because when we have a broken and contrite heart, you know what we're going to do? We're going to search for a way to fix it. We live in a nation that needs to be fixed. And the only way it's going to be fixed is to turn back to God. When we start talking about turning back to God, we... Excuse me, we need to make sure that when we are, are calling out and crying out to Him, that it is not of ourselves. This is a spiritual battle. This is not a physical battle. We read in Ephesians chapter 4, and starting in verse number 17, that the Scripture says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Notice it says of their mind. You cannot walk in the vanity of your own mind. In verse 18, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. I didn't say that. The Lord said that through the ignorance that is in them. That was one of my daddy's favorite words. He would look at me And he said, you're pretty much an ignorant, ain't you? He loved it. He enjoyed it. He thought it was funny. I didn't used to think it was too funny. Now I do. Because I look back at myself at that age and I said, boy, he was right. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. 
because of the blindness of their heart. We live in a world that is living in ignorance and blinded to God. Reading on in verse number 19, who being in past feeling have given themselves over to unto lasciviousness to the work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye, notice verse 20, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt to the deceitful lusts in verse 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no cor corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not, verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Let us pray. God, we're so thankful for your scripture, thankful for your word. And I am so unworthy to stand here. But Heavenly Father... You're worthy to be praised. And we need to hear you. We need to feel your presence. So we ask that you'd speak this morning. And Heavenly Father, as of always, point us toward the cross and the truth of what your word says. In Jesus' name we humbly pray. Amen. As we read this passage of Scripture, and I'm not going to go over it a whole lot, it speaks for itself, uh, but I, I want us to understand, yes, I started out, and it sounded like I was trying to be just hateful and hurtful to all these people who don't understand who they are. No, I understand that it's the fact that Satan has blinded them. They're just in confusion. They're, they're living in ignorance, and they don't understand why. They don't know why, because they have never seen the glory of God revealed. You cannot see how deep you are in with Satan until God shines the light in the darkness. That's the reason that that broken and contrite heart can come to God. Because without a broken and contrite heart, we don't know that we need God. We live in a world that doesn't know that they need God. We live in a world where man thinks that he is top of the totem pole. He is above all. He is above everything on this face of this earth. We live in a country where we have been blessed to be a powerhouse around the world. Why is that? Because years ago, our focus was upon one God, the Heavenly Father. Now, our focus as a nation is not on one God. It's on, what can all you people do for me? And I'm not talking about politic, political parties. I'm talking about politicians in general. They need salvation. How do we show them, preacher? We, we can't unless we break ourselves down and let God allow us to give them that authority and give them that, the, the word. I'm sorry, not the authority because they think they have all authority already. They don't know that they're going to answer to a judge one day. They don't realize that. We've got to be a new man, a new creature. 
set apart. I'm not trying to be ugly, but I am here to tell you that when I was little, my daddy believed in the fact of you tell the truth even when it hurts. Today we've got into a place to where nobody wants to hurt anybody else's feelings. And you can't hear the truth without having your feelings hurt. And those that get their feelings hurt are crying so loud that nobody else can be heard. I ain't being hateful, I'm just being honest this morning. So what does that mean for us, preacher? I want you to understand that this morning that we have got to do, just as the scripture says in verse number 22, we've got to put off concerning the former conversation, put off that old man, put off this guy. And, and I'm trying as hard as I can. Believe you me, I get on my soapbox pretty quick about some of this stuff. I'm not trying to be on my soapbox this morning. I am having compassion on some of this stuff. Because I realize that they're blinded by the darkness. So I've got to put off that former person that I once was that would go in with, with guns ablazing and, and just insults and injury and everything else that goes along with it. And I'm trying to put that off and say, in love, the fact that these people that think they're a cat, you're not a cat. I don't care what you think. I don't care how you tattoo your face. I don't care how many hairs you get implanted. I don't care what you do, how many surgeries you have. You're not a cat. You're not a dog. And if you're a boy, you'll never be a girl because you were created a boy. If you're a girl that wants to be a boy, you're never going to be, no matter how many surgeries. Well, doctors can do amazing things today. God put you on the face of this earth perfect the way that you were when you were born. Without a shadow of a doubt. And from that you will never change. You will never change. So put off the old person. Let God's light shine in. We got to put off the old person so God's light can shine through us. If we got the darkness covering up the light inside of us... It can't show through, can it? It cannot. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Folks, if we're going to be a man of the house, we've got to be strong enough to tell the truth even when it hurts. We've got to be strong enough to cry out to God and say, God, I need help. I can't do this in and of myself. And we need to be renewed in our spirit through Him and by Him for Him, for His glorification. We can't glorify our family until we can glorify the God that brought us from death to life. We cannot, I'm going to say that one more time so we can get it. We cannot lift up our families until we can glorify the God that brought us from death to life. Through salvation. Can't be done. We cannot lift up our families until that's done. Put on the new man in verse 24 it says. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Do you remember the day of your salvation? Do you remember the day that God came and he said. And you answered the door and he changed your life forever. There was something refreshing and renewing. There was something that you couldn't explain. It is something that you can't put in full detail. I remember and I've heard so many stories about people telling me, oh, well, preacher, I remember, I remember the altar call being given and I remember thinking I'm going to... I'm not going up there. I can remember people telling me about how white their knuckles was when they was holding on to the pew and they said, I thought if I could hold on and just not let go that God wouldn't have to deal with me. He wouldn't have to work on me. But for some reason I turned loose. And then I remember feeling the rush and the warm. I remember feeling something just filling me up and renewing me. Maybe not in those exact words always, but the same kind of story. Why is that? Because the new man was being put in. God was taking away the darkness and filling the darkness with light. And when He run your cup over, you can't contain that. That gets you excited. That gets you uh, uh, a little bit... Uh, 
excited enough to maybe dance a jig. Like I've said before, I'd click my heels together, but I'm too fat to get off the ground. But we've got to put on the new man. What does it tell us to put away? What is the first thing that it tells us to put away? We've talked about for a few weeks how that it's always this big, long list of sins and then lying. But here we have it flipped around. The, the Bible is telling us here in verse number 25, he says, Wherefore put away lying. Put away lying. So when somebody looks at you and says, I know I was born as a boy, but I think I was created to be a girl. It's not a lie to look at them and say, no, you wouldn't. But that might hurt their feelings. My feelings had to be hurt for me to come to salvation. You got to know that there's wrong before you can know to right. Do to right. Hmm. Okay. Put away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For what? We are members one of another. We are members one of another. And if one of our members is not functioning properly, what happens? What happens when, we, when our sinuses ain't cooperating? We're getting to that time of year, right? Everybody gets a little stopped up, gets a little runny nose and watery eyes and everything. I don't feel so good. I go to the doctor. Get checked up, check up, checked out. Why? In an effort to make myself feel better. Well, as a Christian, when we are living in a day and a time when sin is swirling around us and it is trying to swallow us up whole, why are we not going to the great physician and saying, God, give me the remedy to fix this. I want it to be better. It's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to do that. As men of the house, it is our responsibility to make it start. Ladies, we need you as well. Because it has been proven throughout history when men don't stand where they're supposed to stand, guess what? The woman most of the time steps up and takes his role. It's not her place, but she does it out of necessity. And when she does it out of necessity, there's a problem. That means the man's not doing his job. So it first starts with us, men. Be ye angry and sin not, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. Rather, let him labor working with his hands to the things that is good. We've got to work toward the Lord. Let no corrupt communication come proceed out of your mouth. But that but that which is good to the use of the edifying, that which it may minister grace unto the hearers. I don't care who you are this morning. We have all been confused. I have been ignorant. I have been despised. I have been rejected by men. I have done so many things in my life. I do not deserve salvation. I do not deserve to cry out to a holy God. I don't deserve it. But because that God sent His only begotten Son, I have the right to come to the throne of grace. It is through the shedding of blood for the remission of sins that I can cry out to my Abba Father and say, God, forgive me because I have fallen short. And when I have fallen short, I can cry out to Him and guess what? He is faithful and just to forgive me of all my sin. He is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sin. Verse number 30, it says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Did anybody hear that? Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed. Sealed unto the day of redemption. He will not ever forget me. You know why? Because I am sealed with that atoning blood. I am sealed because I have been bought with a price. I have been bought with a price of a death 
of a sinless man. His name was Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for your sins and mine. He gave His blood so that you could have life and have it more abundantly. And I need not to ever forget that I am sealed until the day of redemption. I am sealed until the day that He steps out in the eastern sky and says, children, come home. And one of these days, this old fat boy is going to fly. I will get off the ground. You know why? Because he's going to call me and in the twinkling of an eye, I'm going to meet him in the air. If you can't tell, that gets me a little bit excited. I'm going to fly without an airplane. I'm going to fly. And I don't even think I might even, I don't even think I look back at this old world. Because there ain't nothing here I'm going to miss. Because my family will be there with me. You say, your family. I mean my family of God will be there with me. Those who believe, those who walk the walk and talk the talk, those will be there with me. Those that completely depend upon Him, those that follow after His Word, those that are, that are men after God's own heart, those are the ones. We're going to be there, and we're going to be there together, and we're going to remember that we're sealed under the day of redemption, and when we fly up together, I think that there is going to be a hallelujah party around there. You ain't never heard me get as loud as I'll get up there, I don't think. Matter of fact, you will never see me jump as high unless I jump off a roof. But it makes me excited. It's not the bitterness and wrath that we need to have against the people. It's against Satan, that prince. The prince of darkness. He's the one that's telling the lies. It's him the one that is speaking evil. It is him the one that is getting in the minds of the people around today. And he is defecting them. He is, he is clouding their judgment. He's clouding their mind. It's him that we need to despise, not the people. They, have, they deserve. Notice I said that. They deserve. I said I didn't deserve. But they deserve an opportunity to know a loving God. A God that sacrificed for them. Preacher, what can I do? How can I make this work? Let's be a man of our word. Let's be a man of God. Let's stand in the place that we're supposed to stand. Let's do the things that we're supposed to do. And when we start doing those things, things will start getting back into a little bit of an order. You say, well, this world ain't going to let that happen. You know, God brought the children of Israel out. He brought them out of Egypt. He brought them across a dry seabed. And then they had doubt. He left them wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Some of them didn't get to see. About all of them didn't get to see except for Joshua and Caleb and the newborns. Didn't get to see the promised land. Folks, I want you to know that sometimes there is a wandering in the wilderness. But just because we're wandering in the wilderness doesn't mean that God's not at work. When they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, Caleb, Caleb dreamt, I think he may have dreamt every night, about that promised land that he was supposed to have been given the first time he went in. When he got in there and there was giants in the land, and when he was asked, he said, Caleb, what do you want? He said, I want that land that was promised me 40 years ago. And I think somebody asked him, says, what about the giants? He said, if they're in there, I'll get rid of them. He wasn't a bit afraid. Why? Because God was on his side. I'm not afraid to stand today because God's on my side, the one who loves me. But if we want to know him better, we need to cry out to him and say, God, forgive me. Because I have failed you. God, forgive me. I didn't stop loving you, but forgive me because I have failed you and not stood where I needed to stand. This morning as we stand together, would you turn to hymnal, your Moravian hymnal to 517? We're going to stand together and we're going to sing, Lord God, we worship thee. But if we sing in Lord God, we worship thee this morning, would you make sure that you're crying out to Him in truth when you say, we worship Thee. As we sing, 517.
May God's love shine upon you. May his grace be within you. And may his word be about your lips as you go this week. Speaking in honest truth, humbly bowing before him in Jesus' name. Amen.